Hey everyone, welcome to another FPS tutorial in the Gato Engine. Today we're going to build upon the interaction setup that we did in the last episode. And we're going to create an interaction component. That component is going to be something that we can add to any object in our scene and make it interactable. As always, everything in the project as you see it, the source files, is available on my Patreon for my patrons. You can check that out with the link in the description. Otherwise, let's uh, let's get going. Now, if you didn't see the last video about the interaction setup, I'll put a link to that also in the description. Otherwise, let's jump into our FPS controller just to refresh where we're at. We're currently doing a ray cast from the center of our camera out into the 3D world, and we're getting a result from anything that we collide with. We also have an interact distance that we can adjust and whenever we press the interact button, we are checking if we are colliding with anything and we're doing something if we are. What we're gonna be doing is taking this, this print logic, this do something logic, and we're gonna put it into a component. Now, when I say component, what I mean is something that we can add uh, easily to, to any object, to any you know, box or door or physics object, whatever you have and it's gonna make it interactable. And I say component because we're gonna reduce the dependencies. I'm learning as I progress through this tutorial series that having things to be a little bit more modular and, and doing that through a component system can help with that is gonna make it a lot easier for someone to say, take this interaction setup and plug it into their own project. If I have a lot of dependencies uh, within my controller or weapon system and, and everything else, these tutorials are a little bit less helpful. So going forward, and even maybe we might go back and, and change some things and fix some things, we're gonna try to make things as modular as, as possible. So to do the component, the first thing that we need to do is create a new script. So we'll go down into our scripts folder and we're gonna create a new script. And we're gonna call this script interaction components. Now this script is gonna take a new class and that's gonna allow us to uh, select this when we add a, a new node. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll call this uh, interaction component and it's going to extend uh, just a basic node because we don't, at the time, we don't really need any 3D elements to this. We'll set that as a class name and already if we go into our create new node and we type in interaction, we already have it showing up. So let's go ahead and go to our level and let's find one of our boxes over here. And actually the, the order of this is not right. So let me, let me adjust that. I'm looking at this static body 3D node that we have and we're calling this interactable box. The idea behind this component is that we can go to, uh, to nodes, to objects that we have set up and simply add this interaction components to them. And that's it. We just wanna add the component and that's gonna handle everything else that we need in terms of making it interactable. Now, of course, right now it's not actually doing anything. So we'll go back to our interaction component. Now, how this is going to work is whenever we're doing our ray cast, we're actually getting this object right here. We're getting our static body 3D node, right? However, we're not attaching any scripts to this node and nor do we want to because everything is being handled through our component. So we need a way for interactions with this node to communicate with our component. The trick is that we want to control all of these signals from the input component. And we're gonna do that through the use of some variables and some, uh, some signal logic. So the first thing we need is a variable to hold the parent of our component. That's gonna be the reference to the object that is being detected by the raycast. Then in our ready function, we want parent to equal get parent. Now this means that we do have a uh, sort of dependent logic here. The interaction component has to be an immediate child of whatever that parent object is, right? Now that we have our parent, we need to make a connection to this parent through our input component. So we're going to create a new function called connect parents. And within this function, we're going to add signals to our parents from the input component. Now, part of me does not like this logic that we're affecting another node through this node, but Keep in mind, even without a script, there are already built-in signals. We're just gonna be adding signals to that. There are a few ways you can add signals. You're probably used to the traditional uh, upper right, node tab, add a signal kind of thing. You can also create a signal in a script and do it that way. Another way you can do that is 
purely through code. So we're gonna get a reference to our parent and we're gonna use the function add user signal. And then we can name that signal. And we're gonna be adding a few signals here. We're gonna add a focused signal, which is when we are essentially hovering over an interactable object. We're gonna be adding an unfocused signal, which is gonna be when we unhover. I, is, that, is that the word actually, unhover? Um, when we're unfocusing from that object. And then we're gonna add a third and final signal for when we are interacting with that object. So we've created these signals. Uh, think that you've created a script at this point, but we're not. And we've created these signals within the parent object. Now we need to connect these signals to functions within our input component. Now we don't actually have any functions yet, so let's go ahead and create those first. So for our focused function, we're gonna do a, I'm gonna call it in range. Uh, you could do it, you know, focus or however you wanna call it. This is gonna be when we are detecting something with our Raycast. And you could, you know, have something pop up on the UI. You could have it be highlighted. In fact, we'll probably do that in the next video. This is just gonna run whenever we are detecting something with our Raycast and therefore affect the object that we are detecting. For now, we're just going to uh, take our parent and we'll print that in our output just uh, as a proof of concept. Then for our unfocused, we need another function and this is gonna be, I'll call this not in range. This will be when you look away from an object and we will, I guess in this case, just print, uh, print nothing. So we'll just pass at this point. We can do stuff with this in the future. And then finally, a function for when we interact. And again, we'll probably, uh, we'll just get the parents, but let's print the, print the name so it's different than our in range. I know these prints are, are kind of boring, but it's, it's easy to, to test things with a print and you don't have to do a bunch of other code that, you know, maybe that code doesn't work. And you just, you need to know it, that it works up until a point and then you can proceed. So we have our functions. The next thing that we need to do is take these signals that we've created and connect them to these functions. So we'll go back to our, our connect parents function and we'll do the, the same three signals that we created. Now to connect, we'll go to parents. We'll use the connect function. We'll get a reference to our parent because again, we're working within the parent. The parent has the signals and we'll use the function connect. Then we pick which signal we want to connect. And then we're gonna specify the callable using this syntax. So we get callable and then we get the, the object that that callable is in. In this case, self, because we're doing it from the input component. And then we can get the, uh, let's see what we're doing is focus. So in range, that's the, the function, that's the callable that we want to run. Now that we've done this, we can emit this signal from our parent and it will run the function that's in our input component. Let's go ahead and fill out our last two connections here. We've got unfocused, which will be connected to our not in range. And we have our in, in a, in a interacted, interacted. I don't know why I find it so hard to type and talk at the same time. And we're gonna do the on interact uh, callable with that signal. And if you're having uh, trouble with connecting these signals, there's a, a test that you can do. You can do uh, from the parent, you can use the function get signal connection list. And then you can check a specific signal and see where that connection is, is at. Our connect parent function is ready to go. We need to make sure we actually run that uh, function. Otherwise it's not gonna do anything. And also make sure that you're running it after we set our parent because we're, we're using that, uh, that variable. All right, so we have our, our signals set up. Now we can go back to our, our FPS controller scripts or wherever you have your interaction Raycast logic. This is where we're going to be checking uh, if we have these signals and then we're gonna emit those signals. Now I say checking for the signals because we need to know if the, the thing that we're looking at is actually interactable. And we can do that 
simply by checking if it has the signal that we want. And I think the quickest way to uh, proof of concept this is actually let's go to our, our interaction function here. So this runs whenever we press the interact button. Currently we're checking if we are detecting anything with our rate cast and then we're just printing whatever that is. So let's delete that and let's still check if it's null because we don't want to run if it's null. And let's also check if the, the object that we are getting with our raycast has user signal. And in this case, we want to check if it has the interacted signal. And if it does, we want to access our cast result, and then we want to emit that signal. So again, the logic here is we are hitting something with our raycast. That thing has the interacted signal because we've added the interaction component. And if it does, we want to we want it to do something, and it's going to emit that interacted signal. So let's check this. So when I press E, something went wrong. Oh, because I can't spell. Let's fix that. Sometimes uh, the error is pretty stupid. Okay, we go to our box that we've added the interaction component to, and when we interact, interactable box down in our output. Awesome. So that's working. Let's add a little bit more logic to our, our casting. And I'm doing this for, for two reasons. One, I don't want to constantly be emitting a signal like every frame. And two, I need to know if I'm hovering over the same object that I did in the last frame. So right now we've set the result of our collision to our current cast result variable. So we're gonna add an if statement. So first we need to check if the thing that we just hit is the same as the thing we hit in the last frame. And we can do that by if current cast result does not equal interact cast result. Because remember, we are, are setting the interact cast result to equal the current cast result. Now, if it's different, if it's not the same thing, we want to do two things. We want to unfocus from the thing we just saw, and we want to focus on the thing we're currently seeing. And we can do that by a couple of more if statements. So if the old thing exists and if the old thing has the user signal unfocused, then we wanna we wanna do a thing. So let's print uh, let's print just let's actually make this a string. Interact cast results plus unfocused. All right, so that'll print whatever we saw in the last frame has been unfocused. And it's unhappy with something. I'm missing the uh, the colon there. Once we've unfocused from the other thing, we need to reset our interact cast to the current result. And then we need to take that, that thing that we're currently seeing, see if it's a collision, see if it exists, and check if uh, it has that signal. And that would be has user signal focused. And if it does, let's print the name of that object plus uh, focus. And we'll save that. So a couple things should happen. We're not gonna run this every frame now because we're checking if it's the same. Two, it's gonna unfocus from the thing we used to see and it's gonna focus on the thing we're currently seeing. I'm sorry if that's a little confusing. Um, It'll make sense when we actually uh, test it out. All right, so let's go to our box. When we hover over, it's telling we've focused on it. And when we hover off, we've unfocused. Focus, unfocus. So that's working, awesome. Let's add another interaction component just to see how simple this is. Let's go back to our level and let's make, uh, in fact, we'll make all of these boxes interactable. I don't know why I put these in, in this order. This should be, uh, that should be first. Mesh is a child of the body. Let's fix that real quick. Pop that up there. All right, there we go, that's better. So through all this hard work, all that we need to do to make both of these boxes interactable is to simply add our component. We add it there, we add it there, and now when we test, we can hover over those and unhover. That's our first box. It's focused, unfocused, focused, 
unfocused. And that's all there is to it. So just with a little bit more work and, and thinking through of how we set this up, we can make it so we simply add a node, we add our interaction component, and it's interactable. Now in the next episode, what we'll do is we'll, we'll visualize this a little bit and we're gonna add a highlight. And that means we're gonna have to affect another child of the parent, which is not a problem. In fact, we can make it just as seamless as we have with this episode. Thanks for watching and as always, keep creating. All right guys, if this tutorial was helpful, consider it a like and subscribe to the channel as we're gonna be covering a lot more. Thanks to all of my patrons who keep this series going. You too can get access to the project source files by joining my Patreon. You can download everything there and you'll also get early access to my videos and sneak peeks at future tutorials. Thanks for watching and as always, keep creating. Thank you.